Good evening ladies and gentlemen, how are we getting on? Welcome to a brand new camp build. And today we're going to be working with the crashed plane and the flying fortress prefab. It's a pretty cool prefab and we don't use it all that often, so thought we'd have a look at it. So let's jump into this one. Okay, so crash plane prefab. We are up in the Savage Divide today at a spot I built at a little while ago. So pretty cool spot and a bit off beaten track this one. So let's have a look at where we are. There we go. You can see right up in the northern half of the map up here in the Savage Divide. That's where we are. Hopewell Cave is just over the way there, a little bit to the west of us. You got Vault 94 and the Pumpkin House just up there. And of course Sons of Dane Compound just down here. So it's a good little spot, we're in a little kind of hidden valley at the edge of the Savage Divide that people don't tend to stumble across, so quite a cool spot to build and it's quite well open and uh, clear and flattish ish so it's quite a good spot. So I've got the crash plane in already, as you can see, as it's just fairly simple to do, but a little bit of sort of positioning in the larger camp area was required. First up, I want to get a staircase in, because I want to kind of attach most of the build to the front of this prefab, which is a bit of a pain to do. So first up, I want to get a staircase in, which is going to eventually go onto the encampment bridges, and as it won't snap to them, we need a workaround. So we're going to use this foundation, line it up with the stairs first. It takes a little bit of eyeballing. If you don't get it right, the next part will end up being sort of um, misaligned, so you might need a bit of trial and error on this one. That's about right. I also want it high enough that uh, it'll sit nicely on what will be the encampment bridge in a minute and that will actually clear the staircase, otherwise this won't work. So that's quite nice and high there. So we use multiple foundations so that we can take that first one off that the stairs are snapped to. That allows us to have a floating staircase like that. And we'll get this encampment bridge in. So this is the end piece, the only one that will sit in on its own. And it's not as tall as I'd like this thing, but so I don't end up using it very often, but it's quite cool for something like this. Get it carefully lined up with the stairs there. And if it's the right height, it will go into the entrance of the Flying Fortress here. Um, if it's too low, obviously you'll end up with collision issues. If it's too high, it's not going to look great either. And you've got to get it lined up as well, which fortunately those strips of metal at the edge kind of help with that, both on the encampment and on the uh, plane as well. Now, it's not quite where I want it. We're a little off centre. So a little bit of work to be done here. Some micro adjusting required. Looks about right. That's about as low as I'm going to be able to get it as well. I'd like it to sit a little more snugly to the floor, but that's about as close as we're going to get. Stick that extra piece in for now, but uh, I'll change it in a bit. So this section here, I would like this sort of section of front foundations that are going to be the rest of the build to be as low as I can get them. Unfortunately, as low as I can get them isn't really all that low. As you can see, that doesn't want to snap through the stairs there. It should do, but I think it's just because it's a bit too low. Once we bump it up a bit, It'll start playing ball, but uh, it's a bit of a pain, unfortunately, that. I did want it to be considerably lower and make the stairs a bit more of a pronounced feature. As it is, they look quite cool in the end anyway. But uh, it's a little more understated there than I wanted it to be. So we'll add on some extra foundations to get the rest of this sort of area in place. As we do want to add some extra bits on here. The plane makes a good place to live, but you can't... Well, you can just about cram everything you need in there. But it's a bit more interesting to add some extra areas. So there we go. We've got a 3x2 on the left, and currently it's a 2x2 on the right, but I'm actually going to shrink that down in a bit. We'll worry about that when we get to it. So this side is going to be my crafting room space thing. So... I want to go nice and ramshackle to go with sort of attached to a crash plane that we've just found in place. So I'm going to stick a floating roof on first, so rather than have it look like a full solid structure. So as you see, we've got a wall in the corner. We're just snapping these angled corner pieces on and extending outward. Now I can change the one that's attached to the wall for a flat roof and take it out as we've broken the connection with the rest of the roof. Then we can just snap that corner piece back in like that. And voila, flying roof. Nice floating roof. Obviously, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, so we're going to need to do some uh, supporting work. So, extra foundation on there. Not actually necessary, but it works. Then we'll get the staircase in, an upper floor in, and then we can snap some posts onto the corner. Technique I use quite a bit, this one. It's worthwhile if you actually want things snapping to corners, because for some weird reason, these posts don't like to do that. There we are, on the corner. And we'll repeat this on every corner, except this one nearest to the Flying Fortress, as there's a slight issue with the positioning of the 
well actually it's more the encampment bridge really rather than the foundation but uh, either way and that is that the foundation is too close to that encampment bridge so we're not going to be able to get the post in the way i want it I see i'm having some difficulty getting that upper floor in because the flying fortress and the f encampment bridge are kind of blocking it from beneath which is a bit annoying so we'll do it on the inside and it should snap there but the bars in this particular spot are blocking it the top horizontal bar rather than the angled one seems to be the problem it might also be that post underneath it actually i'm not sure either way i can't get the tall one in the short post will fit in but for some reason i can't snap one under it and i can't snap uh, the long one in which is quite annoying so after much fiddling around i came up with a, a workaround that'll do it's not ideal but it works so again we'll stick these floors and the stairs back in not necessarily in that order <laughs> we just need one large one here because we're not actually going to go on the corner if we go one sort of step inwards there, it goes in just fine. It still supports the roof, it's just not on the corner. Well, it looks like it's supporting the roof anyway. So, in this next stage, where we're going to dress up the side and put some sort of walls in here, using the chain link, we'll kind of conceal the fact that that's a little bit off, well, off the corner. So, I do like these chain link fences, I use them quite a lot, and uh, we're going to make good use again. And they carry kind of scrappy, not exactly walls, but um, enclosures, I suppose would be a good word. We're going to make sure we're using the snapping toggled off here, as it just makes it much easier to place them on the corners and right on the edge of the foundations. Otherwise, uh, the collision and the positioning on the edge there can get a bit finicky. So toggle off that snapping, and it's generally easier to place these in manually. Here we go. So we'll carry this on all the way around. We've got this last one in. So you've got a bit of the dirt clipping through the foundations there, or vice versa. Well, it looks all right. Looks like it's just kind of blown in. It's fine. So over here, where we had the issue with the pillar, I'm deliberately making sure the thick post on this chain link is in the corner. Because it kind of fools the eye into thinking it's properly supported there. You'll see what I mean in the toy. You won't really notice the fact that the thing's off the corner and uh, just making sure that there's something that looks sort of like it's in the right place kind of throws your eye off from seeing what's really going on which creates the correct final look obviously that post being off the corner is now causing problems with getting this chain link fence in here but with a little bit of patience it kind of goes close enough but again it worked the whole thing is designed to be scrappy anyway so if it's not perfectly aligned it kind of doesn't matter too much there we go that's the basic piece now, unfortunately, any enemies that show up can shoot straight through that chain link without damaging the chain link, and uh, it makes the place feel not quite as enclosed as I would like. So we're going to add some reverse junk fences on here. You can see we have a bit of a slope going on here. There's one drawback to this location. There is some fairly flat ground in the middle of it, but uh, this particular build is a bit awkward with it. So you can see we've got a bit of a floating issue there. It's not too bad. I have to use this um, simpler designed junk fence as opposed to the one that's got a bit more going on because it tends to clip through the ground a bit more willingly that way and it looks like it's sunk in a bit better. Unfortunately, no amount of willingness is going to work on this particular slope so we'll have to come back to that in a bit and solve the problem with something else in a moment. But for now, this particular wall can go around the corner here. There we go. There's going to be a few gaps in these because they don't quite fit to the width of everything else but in the end it looks fine so... Just adds to the ramshackleness of the whole thing. Once again, this more interesting piece is not quite going to sit there without floating, or here, unfortunately. So we'll use the simpler pieces in just a moment. Now we'll get this uh, corrugated metal one in the middle, just to alternate the textures a bit. I'll tidy them up a little bit. There you go. And we'll do another wooden one on this end. Nice and easy. And we'll continue this theme around the corner all the way up to the edge of the encampment bridge there. But I think you get the idea, so let's move on. <laughs> so I'm going to whip those two extra foundations off because I just don't need them for the build. I don't really want this side to be any bigger than it absolutely needs to be. I want it kind of different proportions and stuff just to add to that ramshackle vibe. So that sort of works. I spent a lot of time during this build kind of backing off and having a look at the overall if effect of the thing with the uh, plane and everything else. So... Useful sort of visualisation trick, that one. Sort of step away and have a look at things from a distance, see how it looks. So, once again, we're going to add some junk walls reversed up around the edge of this. Another reason for doing this is, as I've said before, I'm not a big fan of the edges of the foundations being visible when you've got them as high up as this. To be honest, I'd prefer to have them much lower down, as I said before. But it does kind of... Well, it's necessary for this build, and 
the junk fences do a good job of concealing that and adding to the ramshackle scrappy look so it works quite well on this side however the gaps between them is going to be a bit more problematic and we'll skip onto this last piece be a bit careful with this because it's so close to the prefab but it does work yeah the gaps between these posts these uh junk walls rather are going to be a bit awkward for this side they won't look quite right whereas the chain link on the other side solves it hence why i'm putting these perimeter wall railings in as they kind of finish the whole thing off a little bit it's not really necessary in what we are crafting room there we do need to close this off i'm going to use an encampment fence because it'll work with the slope much better in snapping off and it adds just a bit more texture and sort of thickens up that section of the wall which is quite cool and we'll be able to stick stuff to it in the decoration phase as well which is always a win so last thing i want to do before i head on to that decoration phase is put a couple of extra posts in so that the few that stick out like this reach all the way down to the ground and on that note we can head off and decorate this place so there we go tour time we went from probably just under a quarter of the budget used to probably just over three quarters with the decoration on this one, which is kind of the way I like to do things. Going crazy on the decorating really does make the whole thing look scrappy and bring it to life and make it look complete. Around the back here, we've got a little uh, bathroom shower set up and my collectrons tucked in the corner there as well. And he went actually quite nicely on the ground. Sometimes I think plays havoc with trying to place it when it's on uh, uneven ground like that, but it worked quite nicely. Got a few extra bits and pieces around there just to dress it up a little bit, make it look like there's a bit more going on than just a couple of things dropped down. A few extra bits and pieces of detail added on the outside as well there. That guard post and turret just sort of change the shape up a bit, make it a bit less square, make it look a little bit more organic, which is the same thing we're doing with the uh, gas station sign and some other bits and pieces out here as well. Put a load of extra trees and uh, brambles around as well, because this is quite an excessively open space sometimes. And it sort of makes the whole place look a little bit more complete and like the wildlife's growing back. Heading on inside, let's see what uh, the vision came to, I guess. So we've got our little shopping area over here, and fitting the symptomatic in can be awkward sometimes, so tuck it in that corner worked quite well. Loads of extra bits and pieces to dress this up, somewhere to sit if you need to wait your turn for the uh, vendor machine, some stash boxes if you want to use those. Loads of little bits and pieces to add detail as well. Always difficult with builds like this figuring out where to put the decon arch in but I tucked it in in the entranceway here and you can just pass on through and the switch next to it means that uh, it's not a problem if you don't want to use it turn it off and we have our crafting space managed to fit everything in here except the cooking station which is basically the way i wanted it so quite happy with this loads of bits and pieces stuck onto the walls at the back got some extra signs standing around as well couple of uh, new Kegel cutouts there, just to do something a bit different with the way I dress up the power armor station as well. To use the new chem station as well, because I do like that one, it's uh, pretty cool. It's big though, so you do need a decent bit of space to fit it in. And a few extra bits and pieces chucked on the floor as well, just to, again, break up otherwise blank surfaces, which always makes a big difference. Happy I finally got the radiation barrel as well from uh, Radiation Rumble. You may notice here, actually, that my staircase is missing from the front of this uh, encampment bridge and that's because I accidentally deleted it and didn't fancy starting the whole thing over again so imagination required there <laughs> we've also added a few extra bits onto the encampment bridge as well just to fill up an otherwise blank space again and it looks pretty cool I think so let's head inside the prefab and have a look at the inside of this plane this is our kind of living space I like how it's come out this one, much like with the mobile home, I kind of apply the same principle to both of them, which is sort of start with wall decoration, once you know what sort of furniture you want where, and then just cover the walls in as much stuff as you can. It makes the whole thing look scrappy and chaotic and busy, and gives splashes of colour all over the place, and really makes the whole thing look way more complete. Which, both of those prefabs, this one and the trailer home, look uh, much better if you do that IMO. A little um, side unit there, kind of a sideboard thing that I decided to improvise on through a coffin there on the top of the filing cabinets. There's two versions of that coffin. One is a stash box and one isn't. That's the version that isn't. And yeah, looks quite cool. Heading on to the bedroom again. Loads of bits and pieces, sort of uh, improvised bedside cabinets, things like that, using stash boxes. Loads of splashes of colour from the magazine displays and stuff. 
chuck the plushies in because they really add extra sort of stuff on surfaces which in some ways we have a limited selection of and plushies do a really good job particularly in bedrooms of busying up those surfaces which always looks really cool i spent uh, a good bit of time putting stuff up in here and really decorating the space to make it look as complete as i possibly could and i'm quite happy with how it came out thought i'd put the little stove in there as well because i imagine this place gets a bit cold sometimes so you need something to heat it up when you're living in here yeah Decent bit of space down the middle to manoeuvre down as well, and plenty of detail, plenty of decoration going on, and always something new to spot, which is what I wanted in here, so really happy with how this one's come out. Another pretty cool ramshackle sort of a camp, but I, I do like doing things like that. Glad I got to use that uh, Meat Week cooking station as well, though we definitely need some more crafting station styles to use Bethesda. But, on that note, here we go we'll make our way out i do hope you guys enjoyed this little camp build i'm really happy with how it came out it's uh, good fun nice and busy scrappy lots of color and uh, i really like the look of it so i do hope you guys liked it if you did please do consider dropping me subs and likes i very much appreciate it down below the video as well you can find social media links merch store channel memberships and all those other good buttons if you're interested in supporting the channel that way i massively massively appreciate that it really helps out it's a massive thank you to everyone who's done that and if you get a chance of course do join us for live streams as well we are playing 76 we're going to be jumping into the new season before long and continue our challenge run and we are continuing with mass effect 3 as well at the moment and we've got uh, probably doom eternal coming up after that one which should be good fun as well so i do hope you join us for those live streams as well but for now, thank you very much for watching, and I look forward to speaking to you all very, very soon.